what we're going to be going over here is learning curve calculations and all we're going to be doing is setting up the Excel spreadsheet here. We're going to set up and with the formulas here for our different learning curves here. So really what we're going to be looking at is two different learning curve models here. We're going to have the cumulative average model or the rights model and also we're going to have the incremental unit time or cost model here or the Crawford's model. Okay, so let's start with the cumulative average model here. So again, our learning curve calculator here, we're going to have four columns, A, B, C, and D here. And then we're going to have any number of rows here. So the first thing you're going to have to do here in B2 or column B, row 2, you're going to put in the improvement rate and that as some percentage here. This is, you're going to be entering that depending on the uh, uh, different per improvement rates you're looking at. So you're going to have, uh, say, 20% here. We're going to look at it just in terms of, I'm just using, for example, here, 20%. So you'd have some uh, improvement rate, 10% here, that, and that would give you a certain learning rate here, a 90%, and so forth here. Okay, so you enter your improvement rate here, and then you're going to have the learning rate. And this is going to be based off your improvement rate here, where you're going to have in column B, row 3 here, that's going to, you're going to put an equal sign, 1 minus B2 here. Just take whatever you have for your B2 here reference, so 1 minus B2 here, that's going to give your learning rate here. In this case, uh, we have 20% here in B2 for our improvement rate, 1 minus 20% gives us 80%. So that's how that works. So if you have 10% here, you're going to have a learning rate here 90% because you're going to be subtracting 10 per B2 or 10% here from 1, and that's going to give you 90% here. Okay, so that's for our setting in our improvement rate and our learning rate here. Now for our other uh, columns here. So we're going to start here with column A. This is where you're going to put your unit number or your quantity that you produced or pieces here. And I'm starting everything here from row 5 here. I've got these entries here for row 4 for our descriptions. So for row 5 here for unit numbers or our quantities, I've just got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I went down to 20 here. So nonetheless, you enter them in as your single digits here from 1 to whatever. And then for column B, that's going to be your unit cost or hours per piece or something like that. But it's going to be the function. This is going to be that learning curve function that we're talking about. So the first thing you have to do in this column, you have to enter uh, uh, for where we start here with row 5, you've got to enter the cost of the first unit here. And I'm using it as 100 here because that's a good reference to work off when you're trying to understand using as a percentage really here starting out at 100 and it's going to decrease here based on our learning curve here. So it's a good uh, item item to work with if you just put in 400 here. But if you're using the calculator when you're looking at cost you can put in whatever cost of the first unit you have here. But just for our example just we start out with 100 here and then uh, we'll enter that and then we have to enter the function in here. We'll, we'll work, then we have to put the function in for each of our other rows here. Okay, but that's for B here. Then for C, that's going to be a cumulative total cost. And really what we're looking at, that's going to be your row A here, uh, your unit number quantity times your B, uh, column B here. Your, I mean your column A here times column B, A times B. That's what it represents. So if you're looking at uh, 6 here, Row 6, that would be 2 here for A, and B would be 80 here, so 2 times 80 would be 160 here for your cumulative total cost here. And then for your individual unit cost here, all you're doing is you're taking, let's look at uh, C6 minus C5, for example, here. So C6, uh, we would have at, what, 160 here? And C5, we're subtracting C5 from it, the previous uh, calculation we have at 100 here. So that difference would be 60 here. All you're doing is taking uh, your current row here and subtracting the previous row for the, each of those columns. Okay, so that takes care of our description here and roughly how they work. And this is for the cumulative average model. Now let's go down here and let's do the calculations, that set up our Excel calculations here. And again, remember we entered our unit numbers here for A, so what we have to do here for B is our next column. We have to deal with that unit cost and that's that function f of x here. What we do here, and I got everything matched up here, so 1, 2, and 3 here, these different uh, quantity are these different formulas for each other that represent B, C, and D here. 1 represents B, 2 here represents C, 
and 3 here represents D. Okay, so B here for our unit cost here, back to our function. What you do is you equal signs B, dollar sign 5 here. So that's a positive reference. It's always coming back and using that first unit cost we have. In this case, it's 100 here. So if we'd enter that times, this little asterisk here, times B, dollar sign 3, or the absolute reference for the learning rate. It's going to come back and it's going to take that learning rate here, whatever's sitting in there. And then that quantity raised to the power. This is the key here. A little carrot, that's raising it to the power here of the natural log ln of whatever row we're dealing with here, ln of or unit number we're dealing with. So in this case, it's A8 here. It's indexed A8, so it's going to be using a 4 here. In, as for the natural log here of 4 for row 8, natural log of 3 here for row 7, 2 here for row 6, and so forth. So this is being end. You have to index this formula here. Say A6 for row 6, A7 for row 7, A8 for row 8, and on down the line. Now, that, quanti that ln of A8 here divided by the natural log of base 2 here. It's always, that's not changing. That's always going to be the same here, the natural log of base 2. Get all your parentheses correctly, corrected here. I'll back off and you'll be able to look at them. But understand this ln of A8 here row or whatever you have for that, that particular unit number for the row you're dealing with divided by ln of base 2. And so let's just go look at that to show you, make sure you understand it. So what we're talking, that is the natural log, ln of x. That's the unit number that we're looking at or the quantity we're looking at. And ln of 2 here is just the base 2. And that's really just looking at ln of uh, x here divided by ln of 2 here. So just to understand that, that you're dividing uh, x here, or L, natural log of x, whatever row you're looking at or whatever unit quantity you're looking at by always the natural log here of base 2. Okay. So that takes care of column B here. Now for column C here. What you do here, again, again, equal sign here, A8. In this case, we're using a reference row 8 here for that row here, this, this 256 here. A8 times, times the asterisk here of B8 here. All right, that's equal sign A8 times B8. That's all you're doing is taking row uh, column A here times whatever result you have here in column B, your function here. Okay, so you understand, you're gonna index that like A5 times B5, A6 times B6, A7 times B7 for each of those rows here. Okay, so that takes care of a C here, our cumulative total, our C column here. And then the last one is our individual unit time here and that I'm showing here. And that would just be an equal sign here C8, in this case, row 8, minus the previous row, C7 here. Just that difference here. Equal sign C8 minus C7 for row 8 here. Okay, so we see that's just taking uh, whatever we have here in C256 less 210 here. And we're coming up with, what, 45.37 here. Okay, just so you see the sequencing on that, and it would be like... Uh, C6 minus C5, C7 minus C6, C8 minus C7. Just that indexing. Okay, so that takes care of our learning curve for our cumulative average model here. And maybe I better back off so you can just take and look at a reference here for our C here. Or B, excuse me. This was B. Remember A, you just enter a single number here. Then B with this formula here. And then C was for this this formula here, and then D was for this formula, this formula here. All right, so just back, I'm backing off so you, I'll zoom in on it and you can see it. Again, remember, this was the cumulative average model here. All right, so that takes care of our cumulative average model. Now let's go and let's look at our setup Excel spreadsheet here, our form, same thing here, but only using the incremental unit time or cost model, or it would be called the Crawford's model. Okay, same thing. The same spreadsheet we have, same learning curve, same thing here. You'd have the same setup for your improvement rate and your learning rate here. Imp uh, your learning rate equals one minus whatever you had in B2 here. And then for columns A here would be the same here. Unit numbers one, 
on down here. Same as same setup as you had for your cumulative average model. And then it would be the same here for your unit cost here for your B column. Same function as you had here. We went over for the cumulative average model. Same function here. Nothing changes here. And then, but what does change is the uh, column C here, your cumulative total cost here. Again, let's understand that here. Okay, so B here, we had that F of X, same as we have here previously for cumulative average model. But C here, this is instead of, we had the A times B here for the cumulative average model. Now all we're doing is summing B here. Whatever is sitting in B here, again, remember unit cost, we started at some, we have to assign some unit cost. I did in 100 here. And then we just, we are summing whatever row we're getting down to. So if we got down here to column C here for the sum of B for row 6, we're 100 plus 80 here, then we got down to 180. And then if we're down here, row 7, we just add 70.2 to that to get 250.21. Okay, so that takes care of our. Uh, our uh, cumulative total cost here, summing just whatever we have in column B at that point. And then we have our last one here. And, and we'll, okay, let's just go, while we're looking at this C here for sum of B here, let's just go down and let's look at the formula here. So, okay, so for again, same reference here, equal sign sum, uh, Excel uses equal sign sum here. And then you, uh, it would be the your reference here, B dollar sign five, and then your semi or your colons here to B8. In this case, we're looking at row eight here. So you're just taking whatever B5 and all the way up here to row eight to get your sum. And just, just remember, you have to drag these formulas down to get uh, your entire spreadsheet set up here. Okay, so that takes our total, our uh, C here, column C, our sum, our total uh, sum here. And let's look at that here. So maybe, maybe we better look at that. So if we look at our reference here, it would be like, we're always coming back, our indexing B5 to B6, B5 here to B7, B5 here to B8 here. So that takes care of our cumulative total cost here. And then the last was our entry here for cumulative average cost. And this is the case here where you're just taking whatever row you're looking at here, whatever you have in your C, uh, your cumulative total cost here, you're dividing it by whatever unit number or quantity you're looking at here in row eight. So you're just taking, in this case, for row eight here, it's just C8 divided by A8 here. All you're doing is taking, in this case, four in A8 here, quantity of four, dividing it by C, a 314.21 here, uh, by four, and you're getting a 78.55. So that's just, whatever row you're sitting on, you uh, you just take uh, whatever, you take your column number, divide it by your, uh, uh, your your column number C here divided by column number A here, or the row that you're in here, A, C divided by A. Okay, and we'll go down and look at that formula here. We did look at this one here, sum equals that, that for our C column here. Now for the what we're talking about, the cumulative average D here, again, equals uh, equal sign C in whatever A divided by A8 here, representing row 8 here. And again, just look down here going down, indexing C6 divided by A6, C7 divided by A7, C8 divided by A8. Okay, so what we've done here, we've looked at this, this is the incremental model. Now, the only difference between the incremental model here, incremental unit time model, and our cumulative average model, now we have the same unit numbers here, column A was the same, our improvement rate and learning rate would be calculate or do the same function there. And our unit cost here, that function, same calculations that we have here, could go over equals B dollar sign five times uh, B dollar sign three here, those references here, raised to the power here, that, this quantity raised to the power, natural log of index here, A, whatever row you're on here, looking at, divided by your natural log here of two here. Same as we have for the cumulative average model. We work off the same function. What does change here, uh, with this incremental time is how we handle our cumulative total time. We're summing here. All, we're summing what we have here in column B here for some total amount. We're keeping track of that. Whereas with the uh, cumulative average model, you were taking whatever we had here for quantity in A times 
uh, what we had here for our unit cost, quantity times unit cost. Not to confuse any, that was our cumulative average. Uh, incremental unit is summing here. And then for our cumulative average here, uh, with the cumulative average model, we were just taking the previous, we were taking the previous uh, amount here in column C, and well, we're taking whatever we had here for the our current row here in column C and subtracting from it the previous amount here to come up with our cumulative average. But with the incremental time, we're just taking uh, C here, whatever we have here in our C for the row, and dividing it by whatever quantity we have here in, in A. Here. So that's all we're doing here with the uh, incremental unit time. So incremental unit times C8 divided, or your column C here, divided by uh, your column A here for whatever row. Okay, so that's really the difference here between our cumulative average models and our incremental unit time models. Okay, put those functions in and you should be able to use this spreadsheet here. It should work here to determine your unit cost, your cumulative total cost, your cumulative average, or they call them different things here in the Cumulative average model, this column D here is called the individual unit time uh, amount here, whereas with the incremental unit, they call it the cumulative average time here. And then actually with this incremental time, they it's more of an, in it's an individual cost, whereas with the cumulative average model, they try to call it a cumulative cost. So there's some differences in uh, what they're def defined as, but just remember what you're doing with it on your Expel spreadsheet here. The only change change between these two different models is how you handle your this C here column and your D column, cumulative total versus either individual or whatever they define it has here for your in for cumulative average it was an individual unit time for incremental unit here it's a cumulative uh, average cost here okay so that'll summarize our discussion here on these two different spreadsheets and how you are using these two different methods here to set up your different learning curve calculations